Today we are talking about anatomy, this is the book, and we are into the cellular structure because we are all made up of trillions of cells. The cells are like the building block of the building, the bricks. So we have millions and trillions of cells in the body. But this is the structure of a cell. A typical cell is circular. It has a cell membrane made of lipid. So lipid is fat. This membrane is the protective wall. So it keeps the cell together. Once the cell is broken, all the organelles, the contents of the cell will spill. Yeah. And this is what happens in, in case of an injury. When you have an injury, for example, it, it, this is also a lot of different cells. So let's say an injury happens. So what happens to all the cytoplasm and all the other organelles that are inside? So this will fall in here. It will fall in extracellular fluid. Inside the cell is intracellular fluid, which is the cytoplasm. In between here, these spaces, is the extracellular fluid. So the, in, the inner content of the cell will spill all over here. And when that happens, you have seen sometime in a case of an injury, you have a little inflammation. So your, your uh, skin will go a, a little bit bumpy, it becomes a little bit bumpy. That's the swelling that we talk about. That swelling, you may have noticed, has liquid in it. Yes. And that is the cytoplasm. Oh. And, and all the other organelles, they, because they fall in there. So, oh. so this is your skin, mm -hmm. and if there is a little type of an injury, mm -hmm. everything is accumulated in this area. Right. Fluid. So, what do we have generally in case of an injury or a swelling? or inflammation. What's the typical sign of an inflammation? Redness, hot. Okay. Redness, and there is heat. Okay, and what else? Pain. There you go. Pain. Yes. <laughs> Yes. And of course you have swelling. Yes, swelling. Sometimes also it is itchy. Oh yeah. So all of these are typical signs of an inflammation, but this all happens because of the cell. And all those contents is pulling over. Now the body has a great ability to absorb that cytoplasm. So slowly, other cells will absorb that extra fluid. So it disappears, disappear. the swelling disappears. Right. So it, it's a system that goes on in our body all the time. The inflammation happens all the time in our body. Sometimes you know it because it's external. But they may also be internal that you don't see it. So the body goes through all of that. The body has a great defense mechanism. And, and, and that's what we were talking about earlier, about the defense mechanism. It has uh, the ability in the blood cell, the white blood cells, when we study the blood, we'll talk more about that. Uh, any questions so far? We also talked about the DNA, which is almost always inside the nucleus. But there is such a thing as mitochondria. We talk about this the other day. Anybody remember mitochondria? Basically, that's what it is. That's the power cell. That's the energy cell. 
So the energy is produced in mitochondria or by mitochondria. So because energy is related to mitochondria, mitochondria also has a small amount of DNA in it. So if you put this information together, the DNA is your genetic code. Now you learn that mitochondria also has a small amount of DNA. What does, what does that tell us? Because we are a product of our genetic code from right. our parents. We get that. So all of us, our body structure, the whole thing is like our parents. 50% from mom, 50% from dad. Mitochondria is the energy cell. If this one also has DNA, it will also replicate or duplicate that genetic code. So if there was a problem in the genes of your ancestors, you will inherit that too. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. So, what that means is if you have weak parents, chances are that you may also have a weak child. Okay. So it's a small portion, but it's there. Okay, any other question? So on, on page 43, it talks about how the DNA and RNA work. What do they look like? So you have a picture of a DNA, typical DNA. Yeah. The, uh, you know, almost like a step-like thing. Yeah. And, and now we, we are beginning to do more and more research on that. At one time, they did not realize that they could do implant in these, in these genes. With the new research that has just come up, they can replace a particular gene. Yeah. Wow. So, the, the, uh, the DNA looks like this. Mm -hmm. They have been able to cut a little part, these are all different genes. Mm -hmm. They were able to cut this and replace it with something else, with a healthy gene. So if you have some kind of, it, let's say you have sickle cell anemia, mm -hmm. so your gene has that. So they will now replace this part with another gene in there, a transplant. And mean? it can stop the sickle cell yes. right there yeah. in, in your um, uh, generational thing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it, it is amazing. Though. Medicine is changing so fast, and uh, wow. it, it looks like, I mean, the, the day is not very far when we would not have any diseases, unless we create more diseases because of other environmental issues and all of that. But they are overcoming many, many of these obstacles uh, by fixing the genes. What we don't know is if they fix this gene, in a parent, if the offspring will have that corrected gene or not, oh, yeah. that we don't know. Okay. They believe that it will duplicate right. itself yeah. rather than go back to that original. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. But they, they think that they can do it for forever. Mm -hmm. So they will be able to, by doing that, they will be able to create a most intelligent child, most intelligent nation, mm -hmm. or maybe they will create a, a, all Einstein, mm -hmm. millions of Einsteins, wow. or they will create a whole new race. Mm -hmm. If they want to get rid of one race, they will change the gene and we'll have people yeah. of uh, one race rather than yeah. the other. So some of these things <laughs> There is a group of people, the religious people generally say that you're playing with God. Mm -hmm. but, oh, by yeah. changing the genetic codes. Right. 
and uh, the science and God is now competing. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, okay. So, um, so much for the DNA. The the role of RNA. Uh, it said a blueprint is only a guide. The information it contains must be interpreted by appropriate action. The RNA, the substance needed for these steps. And RNA is much like DNA, mm -hmm. except that it exists as a single strand. So as compared to the double strand of DNA, RNA is a single strand. That's why the di DNA is dioxyribonucleic acid. So the following pages has more information about DNA and RNA. Um, so go through that. If you have a question, we will talk. But uh, I want to get into the cell division, which is on page 45. And it's very important for us to learn about cell division because these cells are constantly dividing. Every day we have millions of cells in our body that die out mm -hmm. and then millions of others are being formed. Mm -hmm. It also becomes very important to study as to uh, how these uh, cells function. How do they divide? How do they die? And uh, our health and sickness depends on these cells and the cell division. So cell division is very important. For example, cancer. You see, I had mentioned how one cell becomes cancerous, and then all the other cells around it will also become cancerous also because these cells divide so so rapidly this cancer which is only this big slowly becomes much larger and then it will travel to other parts of the body so sometimes you you hear of a person that he had cancer or she had cancer and died very died very quickly yeah. within a few months or a few weeks right it's because of the cell division the cancer cells multiply much faster than the other normal cells. Mm. We don't know why. The, uh, the treatment for cancer we talked about is there are many mm -hmm. from uh, different chemicals or radiation or laser and all of that. But now they are also coming up with more research how to stop cell division. Oh. So one way to stop the cancer or whatever is to stop the cell division. If they don't propagate, they don't multiply, right. it won't go anywhere, the cell. Yeah. So that's another smart way to control. Yeah. And they have more or less uh, come up with their research. Mm -hmm. There are thousands of scientists all over the world doing all sorts of research at the cellular level, because that's the, the basis of that. So the cell division is important. Um, so there are there are two types of cell divisions. The um, we have on page 46. You see mitosis. Yes. Okay. So a mitosis is a continuous process, and it can be seen in that on page 46. And you see they have different stages of the cell division. So they, they have given you a diagram on page 46, but they've also given you an actual picture of how it was happening inside. So those are the, the different stages of mitosis. So the first cell they talk about uh, the very, on the top has the DNA the nucleus and the nucleolus, mm -hmm. and it also had the centriole, which you saw earlier in the cell, mm -hmm. the organelles of the cell, there are some centrioles. So 
Okay. So the first phase, the normal phase is the interface, the tongue. The second one, the prophase, is you see how the mitosis has moved to different parts. So prophase is the beginning. more or less uh, memorize different phases that happen. So the first one is prophase. So what you see there, the centriole get divided. So this is your cell. And there, you know, there's a little centriole here, and there's a nucleus, a nucleola. So this centriole divide, so you have the centriole like that. And then you also see within the nucleus, what happened? Do you read something in there that's something new? Chromosomes. chromosomes. Yeah. So what are chromosomes? We have 26 chromosomes. Sorry, 46 chromosomes. Okay. So 46 chromosomes in the nucleus. We get 23 from our mother and 23 from our father. Okay. So each cell has 46 chromosomes. So these chromosomes are embedded inside the nucleus and they start to divide. So you can see the chromosomes floating inside. Yeah. Now here we talked about cytoplasm. Yeah. In inside the nucleus is nucleoplasm. So that's the same thing, different type of fluid, but it's inside the nucleus because these are also floating around in the nuclear plant. So you have to have fluid in order for them to float around. So the prophase has these centrioles, they divide and they spread. And these chromosomes become more visible. In the next phase, the metaphase, you see how they have um, the fibers have gone to the different end. Yeah, it's no longer in a circle. And the chromosomes are lined up. So it becomes elongated. Yeah. Different things. Yeah. So the process has begun. It's the process and the metaphase. What's the third process? Anaphase. Anaphase. Mm -hmm. So what happens in anaphase? They separate, the chromosomes are separating. Yeah, so basically they are divided, they, they separate. Mm -hmm. They're moving away from each other. So you see in anaphase, they have become, all of those uh, chromosomes, you see four four little pairs mm -hmm. that's happening. And and then in the, the, the next phase, telophase, the whole cell has divided into two. Mm -hmm. So now you have two cells. And but they are they are combined and they have their own all the organelles and all of those are being formed in two. So after the telophase, we have the anaphase and then the telophase, the fourth one. So the process that is started out in here slowly is moving on to becoming two. And then what happened in the, uh, the telophase, you already have everything has been divided into two parts, okay? 
and the two new cells are, are made wow. in the interface. So interface is going back to the top one right. again. Right. Okay. So basically you have these four stages mm -hmm. and it goes back to telephase. Uh, the, uh, interface. Interface. So that's how we began with the interface and we end up with the interface. So these are different stages of cell. And this happens